back on the Capilano River. I have not been here for over a month, which I think is a record for me since I moved to Vancouver. I am targeting steelhead and I am fly fishing using an indicator rig. I'm gonna use something like this for at least an hour. The name of the game today is fish the holes where the fish are likely hiding. So that is these two deep holes near the highway. And then we'll see what else we can find. But otherwise, let's throw in an indicator. Let's fish the heck out of these two defined fishy spots. Something I'm trying to do this spring is just calm myself down and enjoy, try to enjoy every cast, slow things down, not move around too much. Sometimes I get a little, a little fish hungry <laughs> and spot hoppy. But I gotta learn to just fish the fishy spots, even if that means not moving around very much. All right, so this is what happened to my little system. Obviously this thick knot I made here was not enough to hold the egg and I had a little chartreuse bead there too. So I think what we'll do is we'll take this off and we'll, uh, retie on. Actually, I'm going to show you something I got from uh, a buddy of mine as well as YouTuber and now online fly store and fly tying material owner. Um, he sent me some Pat's rubber legs. These guys here, uh, five Waltz worms, I think size 14. And then three of these uh, blow torches, I think also maybe size 14. No, those look like size 12. So, but anyway, I'm thinking these pats look nice and juicy, and I might throw one of those on and see if it can catch a fish. But I just wanted to shout out uh, Eric and his store, Driftstone Fly Fishing. Uh, go check him out. He actually does ship flies to Canada. So if you're Canadian, you want to try some beautiful flies that these things, these waltz worms, these are catching California steelhead, multiple steelhead. You can check out his video. I'll put one up here and then uh, I'll link his channel and his store in the description. Once we fish this a uh, few more casts, we're gonna cross over the water where it is safe to do so and we're gonna fish the next hole. And then after that is what I'm a little bit um, excited about, exploring something new. One of my favorite things, even on rivers you know, like just checking a few meters past where you've ever fished before, it's like, it's kind of exciting and novel. on the table my desire to go explore this river more just outweighs my confidence in getting deep enough in those holes with the setup I have on today so we're going exploring the one scary part about exploring the Capilano River any time of day any time of year is that this river is kind of murderous um, Hold on, I gotta cross the river. We'll get back to the murderous river in a minute. Yeah, there's a big dam on this river that they use for uh, hydroelectric power generation. They also use it to create a, the Capilano Lake that provides a lot of Vancouver's fresh water. Whenever it rains, there are kind of unknown release times. Someone just decides, hey, it's time to release the dam and let some water out. And that could be anything from a small trickle that can take you out of the knees to, you know, a one and a half, two meter wave that will, uh, I don't know, take you out instantly, I guess, if you're in its path. There's a warning system here, but it goes off like a minute before or 30 seconds before or something. 
That's my understanding, so it's kind of incredibly scary. When you're fishing this river, you gotta keep your head on a swivel and be in a, a place to uh, find safety at all times. Ideally, like a couple steps away from high ground, safe high ground, where you won't be stranded. Now, I am actively ignoring that advice right now. But you may have noticed for the last few videos, I've got this blue vest on behind me. So that's a, a pull inflatable personal flotation device. So I pull a little lever, and there's a CO2 canister in there, and it will inflate and keep me afloat if, I'm ever, if I ever fall into one of those deep pools at cap at the cable. Or uh, if I get caught up in fast water, it'll just give me a better chance of uh, staying alive. So there's been so little rain this week and the, the river levels have been dropping that unless it's user error again, I think I'm, I'm relatively safe right now. So anyway, that's my spiel. If you ever fish on this river, literally your life is in the hands of of, uh, of this river, so be incredibly cautious. Stay two steps away from uh, rescuable safety at all times. So now let's turn you guys around, show you where I'm walking up river. I've all of this stuff that I'm walking up right now is flat, just like I thought it was. But I'm looking for new holes that are a bit deeper, have some runs coming into them, something that I haven't fished before. I think I might see a hole right there. So that's fun. Let's go check it out, guys. This water is really pretty. And there is indeed a nice little, it's a much smaller little pocket in here. But it looks really juicy. I need to find out how to get here in a much safer way than crossing the river. Ideally from a community or a path. But uh, this looks excellent. What a beautiful little pocket of water. And it looks like there's some beautiful water up here that I think I've seen in other people's videos, but I've never fished. And there must be a way to get down there from uh, a community up on the east side. In any case, let's throw our indicator. Yeah, so this water feature is kind of interesting because it actually loops back around and there's a whole bunch of still water on the other side of these fast ripples, kind of like that last hole I was at. That's just a great place for like fish to slow down and hang out and the food is just coming into them and uh, sweeping in with the eddies. Really nice uh, fishy, fishy spots in here. I kind of want to keep exploring, but I, I also do need to limit the amount of time I'm out today and the number of river crossings I do as we get deeper into this canyon, it gets uh, kind of exponentially more dangerous in case of an accidental water release. So. Okay, I fished that for a few minutes. Um, I really want to find out if there's a path that comes down here for my own personal future reference. I, ooh, ooh, are you a path? I think a week or two into March, there was a steelhead caught in one of those highway pools. Um, there's a video put out by a couple of guys, I think they might be brothers, and they caught a steelhead on using some traditional gear, like some kind of float system. Whoa, that's a, that's a rope. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna link their video in the description because it's nice to see a, a ste oh shit, that is, that is steep. I'm gonna find an alternate route, if I can. <laughs> uh, well, I keep losing my train of thought. It's nice to see a steelhead return to the cap. It was a wild, I believe. And uh, yeah, it was a uh, beautiful fish. So you guys should go check out that video. Also, can we take a second to appreciate, look at this natural ivy arch. This looks like it's from a wedding set. And it, what it is, is it's a bent over tree with ivy that's grown all up both sides. It's gorgeous. And it's just been created here naturally. It's so cool. All right, let's climb a GD cliff. It's actually not so bad going up. I bet it would be worse going down, especially if it was uh, any kind of precipitation. Yeah, this is a well-used path. This is, uh, this is no secret to a lot of folks. Might as well keep on going in the forest, see where the heck we are. I 
This is quite a hike in from the trail, but it does connect to the trail right here. Oh, I'm in the illegal part of the trail. Well, that's not good. I did not mean to break the rules. It just kind of happened spontaneously. <laughs> 